What was your near death experience? I was choking on food, almost a full blockage, and couldn't get any air in. After several attempts to get it out, it sunk in that it was really lodged in my throat, and I was screwed. Started to feel dizzy and everything moved slowly. I remember thinking what an embarrassing way to die, and that I didn't want my kid to be watching. It was at breakfast. I started dialing 911, when my husband came up behind me, and started first aid. He got the blockage out, and I started vomiting everywhere. It was very intense. I still went to get checked by a doctor, to make sure my lungs were clear because I felt dizzy for hours after, and my throat was raw, took a day or so to heal, he 100% saved my life. Car accident, we hit a patch of ice, and went over a guardrail, and off a 40 foot cliff, I knew was dead the moment I pulled my leg free from the piece of door stabbing through it, and the blood came out like a faucet, I figured I could at least climb back to the road for help before I passed out, so I did, I flagged down a passing truck, and passed out, and died in the ambulance, before they brought me back, the firefighters used my blood trail, to find my friend's car which saved his life, so mission accomplished, I was 11, I had just developed asthma and my mother refused to quit chain smoking in the house, one night I have a severe attack, I'm trying to use my rescue inhaler and it's not working. Each time I try to inhale it just goes right out my nose. I panic. I vividly remember my mother smoking a cigarette as the panic is giving way to hypoxia. She's screaming at me to use my inhaler. Right before losing consciousness I realized that was it. I'm dead. There wasn't a whole lot of life to flash before my eyes. A sense of calm and peace settled over me as I collapsed. My parents did CPR on me until the paramedics arrived. I woke up in IQ days later with a tube down my throat. The doctors were surprised I survived. My mother never smoked in the house again after that. The car was still fair game for her though. I was a director of one of the largest museums in the United States and walked out on stage to give a pretty controversial presentation. I was already pretty nervous, there's a loud bang from the center of my head. I don't feel my body drop, but I can tell I've hit the floor. My vision blurs and turns red, and in the 3 seconds after the bang, I come to the conclusion that I've been shot and have seconds to live. I'm a very large man, and as I'm fading out, I see my friend, the 90 pounds, 40 kilograms, museum nurse trying to pull me up. I was in shock and the pain didn't really faze me, but damn did it hurt. Indescribable agony that in just 2 seconds made death seem like mercy. I accepted very calmly that my nurse friend's face was the last thing I'd ever see, and faded out. I got to die a dramatic death, and lived to tell about it. I woke up 4 hours later in a hospital after an emergency surgery. I hadn't been shot after all. I somehow had an abscessed wisdom tooth that had become highly infected, and the abscess exploded upwards into my head, splitting the tooth from tip to jaw, and breaking my left maxilla. It erupted with such force, that my eyes bled, and the pain knocked me out. While I was out, my wisdom tooth was pulled without an aesthetic and the infection drained. I get phantom twitches just thinking about it. House explosion. 3 years old in Monton. Ab, I vividly remember standing next to a stove that someone was fixing in the basement apartment of my dad's friend's house who we were visiting, and next thing I was opening my eyes in and the daylight outside, I completely blacked out while the gas stove exploded and I landed clean in the driveway. My dad and mom were on the front page of the Edmonton Journal 1993. I remember distinctly thinking the brightness was heaven and that I had died, and fell into heaven my baby sister had died several weeks prior to SIDS and my mother and father had to explain where she had gone, and I thought I was in heaven, but it was the sky. Had a car crash into my house, and hit me, when I was a child, I was sitting on the couch at the time and it hit me, drove through the next wall into the garage, then came to rest on top of my lap, pinning me down to the couch with its full weight. I won't go into too much detail about my injuries. Suffice it to say that it was pretty gory. It took over an hour for the emergency responders to get me out from underneath it. That hour is foggy at best. I remember so much pain. And at some point I felt this overwhelming sense of peace about the situation. Like, I instinctually knew that all I had to do was let go and the pain would stop. I started to let go, and I began slipping away. The pain stopped, the world slowed, 
and everything started to fade to black. It felt like I was floating on water, and all the fear and agony was taken far away from me. I snapped back into myself to the sound of a firefighter yelling at me to stay awake. Immediately the pain returned, and I was fully here again. Didn't hit me until much later in life that I was interrupted in the middle of the death process. I was investigating a fire out in the middle of nowhere was a single wide trailer with a brick house built around it, which if you don't know, trailers burn like a torch and the brick means all the heat stayed inside, making everything extremely unstable. I was walking through taking my photos and accidentally stepped on a part of the roof that was somehow still attached to the brick wall that was still standing. The entire brick wall then fell on top of me and buried me. It hurt really much, I don't know if you know what a brick wall falling on you feels like, but everything hurts, everywhere. I laid there under the bricks for probably 5 or 6 minutes trying to figure out just how injured I was, if anything was broken, and if I was going to lay there, until I died, because I had no cell service and no one was going to see me. If I couldn't get myself unburied, I'm in the middle of a completely burnt building miles away from anywhere buried under a brick wall. I, thankfully, only had scratches and bruises, and managed to dig myself out after a good while, but good lord was I sore for a while. I was 13. In the first few weeks of a new school year at a new school, I was staying after school with another student I coupled with, trying to make friends. He took me out to the woods behind his house, and showed me a tree he liked to climb with a few boards across the lower branches to sit on. We climbed into the very upper branches of this half dead pine tree and I forgot that this kid was tiny and possibly 50 pounds lighter than I was. I thought I was dreaming the moment the branch snapped. I was falling from 30 some feet up in a tree. This couldn't possibly be real. Right. That illusion was shattered when I hit the first branch. Then I was pretty sure I was going to die. I plowed through several more branches on the way down which scraped me up but fortunately absorbed energy in breaking the dry branches instead of my bones. It probably helped that I landed on a pile of branches instead of hard ground as well. When I hit the ground I had a moment to think oh, that wasn't as bad as I thought. And then I screamed because it was still pretty bad. However, I stood up and hobbled away, cut and bruised all over, but not seriously injured. My poor mother was not amused. I almost choked on Skittles when I was a kid. I shared this before, but when I was like 11 years old I was home alone one day during the summer, just watching TV while eating Skittles. I liked to put a bunch in my mouth and make like a Skittle ball that I would chew on. Something on the show I was watching made me laugh, and I swallowed the ball, which got lodged in my throat. I then experienced a few seconds of sheer terror, because I realized that there was nobody here to help me at all, and I was probably gonna die. Thankfully, I remembered some cartoon or movie where someone jammed their stomach on a chair and got something and stuck from their throat. So, I lunged at the corner of the recliner as hard as I could with my stomach and it actually worked, and popped the small bull out. It was super lucky, because I really had no idea what I was doing. But one of the worst feelings I have ever experienced, definitely never ate Skittles that way again after that. And to this day I'm still a bit paranoid about eating certain things when alone. 